Yo, what's up guys? My name is Severman and today I will show you how I made my latest track called Stolen Moments, which was a collab with Wild Wipes and Robbie Rosen and got released on Glow Records. Before we start with the video, I just wanted to say that I'll be back with a new song on the 2nd of September, so next Friday, if you're watching the video of it being posted. The track sounds like that, you might have heard it on Severman Selects. And if you want to support me, feel free to go pre save it using the link in the description. It really helps a ton. But uh, yeah, let's get right into FL Studio. Let's go. So that's the project file of my track Stolen Moments. So I will do breaks first, then uh, drop later on. Let me show you the vocals first because the vocals are probably, yeah, the, the breaks are made around the vocals. So the, obviously the vocals are the main focus on the breaks. So let me show you those first. So we, again, we got Robbie Rose in here. You take me away to a foreign place. Oh, I know, no, no, and you know, no, no, that this feeling's undeniable. With you, I swear the world slows down. So yeah, great quality, really happy with the vocals here. Um, processing wise, I didn't really do a whole lot here to be honest. With you, I swear the world slows down. Just a little bit of fine tuning with the EQ in here. And then I sent all of the individual recordings I got from Robbie stems into the bus channel where we have some more e like EQing and stuff. But it's really not doing a whole lot here. It's very detailed stuff just to make sure that the vocals sit right in the mix here. So we got a little bit of like transient shaping to kind of add more attack to, to the words and stuff. Just a bit more reverb. I was actually using the wet vocals, but I felt like I still wanted a bit more reverb. And then that's pretty much it here. Uh, I think I just used the delay here and there. Bit of a side chain here with the P controller down. Uh, here at the bottom of the effect chain. So sometimes what I do is, we, since we have vocals on the drop here as well, what I always do is I set up a P controller on the vocal bus, and then I side chain the leads to the vocals. So that basically whenever the vocals play on the drop, that the leads are being reduced a bit, so we have more space for the vocals. But I will show you this later when we talk about the drop. So yeah, Robbie's always doing a great job with the processing as well. They sound really good straight when you when you get the, the files. It's not a whole lot you need to do, but let's actually check out what we did here um, for the instrumental. So the breaks here, I would say, aren't um, very typical for Progressive House. They're actually a bit UK, a uh, UK garage inspired. You take me away to Yeah, we do have this UK Garage inspired beat and let me show you what, what the drums sound like here. So for those drums, I use basically the, the drop kick, but we have a filter on here so that we don't have that quite aggressive click sound that we only need it on the drop. Then we have two, um, or actually one snare and one clap. And then we have two more hi-hats and then that's pretty much it for the drums. The interesting thing with the hi-hats is that those are being panned to the left and right side by 50%. Then we got a few more FX sounds, something like impacts and stuff. Some more of these. And then another impact as well as some vinyl noise. So that's pretty much the drums and effect section. So let me show the more melodic sound. So we got, first of all, a Reese bass here.
For this respace, I just use Silent One. It's pretty much just a detuned saw that I set up there with a filter on. This one is sidechain to the kick. Where's the kick? I, there it is. No. And also there's another whole lot that I did to the sound. I just added a bit more warmth, around the 250 hertz here to this Reese bass. And then I have this crush, which adds this bit crushing effect. So if you pay attention to the, to the high end, you will notice how this adds a bit more kind of spark to it. You know, it's just in the background, it's not too obvious, but I just wanted to add that nice spark to the high end there. So that's the bass line and drums. Then we obviously got some chords. So for the chords, we have two layers. The first one is this electric piano from Labs. And then we got this 80s type of pad. So the piano um, in the video sounds like that. Got a nice sort of plucky sound, which I really liked about this one. And we have this pad. Also, there's nothing really processing wise on those. I just have um, some OTT on the piano and the stereo enhancer to make it a bit wider on the ATs pad. Also, just a stereo enhancer to make it really wide on the sides because. Especially with chords, you want to make sure that you have those on the sides when you have a vocal, um, because you know you want to have usually the, the mono, the like the center of the mix for the vocal, then then have the the chords around the vocals supporting them. Then we have an 80s lead type of sound. I also used flex here. I really like flex for especially those 80s sounds. Then processing wise here, I also um, added some uh, yeah, like stereo delay, 15.3 milliseconds, also to put it on the sides, because especially with this lead sound, it sits in the exact same range as the vocals. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much all the break elements here at the start of the break. Take me away to a foreign place. Then here later on, in the, in the like eight bars later, we're just adding this sort of guitar, which is also from Labs, the Peel guitar, and we're also adding this vocal type of sound, which is super quiet, but it's still adding something to it. And now we're dropping to the chorus. Let's see what we did here. So we have um, the drop leads and the drop chords that are being introduced or being filtered in here. I will show you those when we talk about the drop. And then um, yeah, in the build up later on, we're adding the drop kick again. Then we have the Reese bass. Um, then we add a bunch of effect sounds here to make that transition nice. Let me show you how it will sound without those. It's not bad, but could be better. So that's why I added these. And now the transition is really nice and smooth and it also separates those two parts, the chorus and the verse from each other. Then I'm adding in um, some rides with a volume automation here. Just to add a bit of rhythm and some high end as well. And then we have some more um, effect clap sounds down here. Then besides that, I'm also adding this high sustain string. It's also super quiet, but it still adds something to it. And then we have this one here as well. 
as well as this one. Frozen, frozen, I treasure you. I swear the world slows down. It feels like time is frozen, frozen. I treasure what we have right now. I'm living for these stolen moments, moments with you. I swear the world slows down. Now we're adding the kick drum for all of that, you know, tension. And um, yeah, we're opening up the filters of the uh, drop leads and chords. Let me show you the kick real quick what we're doing here. Because also here, I, I like kind of what we did here. It's not just the classic way. Well, usually you would actually have snares, but we used the kick drum here. I felt like this created more groove here, whatever. And then when we kind of build up the tension here, we're having this rhythm right here for the kick drum. We're also pitching the kick up and then down again here at the end. I thought this created a yeah, really nice transition into the drop. Dun, dun, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and then we have this effect sound here again. What else? Um, this uplifter. And then some more rides and claps. Some more uplifters. And then some like support snares. And that's pretty much it. Boom. So let me show you um, yeah, how we made the drop. So first of all, let me show the drop leads. So what, what actually makes the drop special here is I would say the that that type of stop that we have here and then um, also here. So how we did this, well, first of all, it's, it's just the melody, the way it is, the rhythm of the melody that has this sort of break in here and here, but it's also being like we put more emphasis on that um, break by reducing the reverb here with the drop leads and by also taking out like the, the claps and some other sounds. Yeah, but let me show the, the individual lead layers. Well, so we have a bunch of like next Nexus um, layers. So these, these first four ones are very aggressive, um, super star kind of leads. And then I added, yeah, this lower layer one. And then we have some more, yeah, yeah, pianos. Just to add something more organic to the leads, which I always like to have. And then we got this mono support synth. It just adds also a bit more body, but also mono information to the leads. So let's take a look at how we process those. So first of all, some EQing like that, low cut, 200 Hertz. High cut, 16K, then um, stereo enhancer to spread them out more. Question here, how, how wide you should have your leads is, well, what I, what I would say is make sure that they, when you take a look at, for example, at the correlation meter and span, or you can also take another correlation meter, just make sure that they don't go into the negative area of the correlation meter because then they're too wide and you lose too much information when you play them back in mono. So for instance, if you listen to a track uh, on your phone and you have them super wide, what would happen is the leads would almost disappear completely and you would wonder why do my leads sound so quiet on my phone. So make sure the leads, they don't go into the negative area. You can have them nice and wide around the, the zero or whatever, like maybe a bit to the right side. So what usually works best is that area of between zero and 0 0.5. If they're kind of more around the one, it means they're too mono-ish and then that won't sound really interesting because you do want to have some width to them. So let's check out the correlation, correlation meter for the, the leads. So 
So yeah, that's basically what the correlation meter is doing. It's staying pretty much, again, as I said, between that zero and 0 0.5. So around like 0 0.25, 0 0.2 something. All right. Then um, we have some OTT. So just like 7%. And then I just added a bit more high end here as well. Then we have Transpire, which I always like to have on my leads. Just to add a bit more attack to each node, a bit more punch. And this also helps to make them more in your face in the whole mix after all. Then we got the Fruity Reverb with the P controller. Sounds like that, or looks like that. So whenever the leads play, the wet signal is being reduced just to make sure the reverb isn't too much in, like that is not clashing with the leads, the dry leads too much. So this always makes them, makes the reverb a bit cleaner. Settings wise, always have the low cut at around like six, 600 hertz here, high cut 10k hertz. Um, I would always recommend um, taking out some of the lows in the reverb because else it would sound too muddy. And then the decay time is set to 3.4 seconds here. So then we got some more EQing here. This is just to glue the leads more with the rest of the sounds to get a more balanced sound after all. So I added a bit more body here around 250 hertz reduce the 520 hertz and then boosted the 1.1k hertz again and added a slight boost to the high end as well but this really depends on how your leads sound like yeah you just need to reference to other tracks to really see um, what's missing with your leads or what what you should boost or whatever and we got the filter for the the build up and stuff and then um, this one the fruity balance is actually for the side chain with the vocals that's what i already told you about at the beginning of the video so let me show that real quick so for instance on the second half of the drop we have some ad libs and stuff from robbie take me away, you take me away. Stolen moments, moments. This as you can see i have this p controller on the vocals the bass knob is set to 20 percent because that will be the default volume for the leads if i root the um the fruity balance on the leads to this P controller. And then the volume here is set to 8%, so that's um, how much sidechain will be applied to the drop leads. So it's it's really just a little bit. So again, let me uh, show you the lead bus. So here we have the fruity balance. Now take a look at what happens with the volume knob here when the vocals play on the drop as well. So you will basically see that this one will be reduced a little bit. So that's how I did that. And then we just got the side chain here. Okay, now let me show you the um, drop chords. So as you can tell, we also have this tape stop effect, which also puts more emphasis on this little pause thing here during the notes. Gew doing this so let me show you also the layers here so we got first of all this pattern just some nexus square sauce and then we got um a saw synth here from side one which is pretty much the inner saw just with some uh, uh stereo width to it then we got this pattern with some more pianos and stuff So that's true pianos, also true pianos, the second one here. And then Nexus piano. So for the synth chords, we have this EQing. So it looks quite intense. <laughs> I was needed here. So what I did here, I took out the lows basically because obviously we don't want to have the chords clash too much with the bass line. And then I took out these 380, 550 hertz because I felt like we had too much of that muddiness in here. So by reducing, like you can always say, by reducing the two to like 500 hertz range, you always take out muddiness. Obviously you don't want to overdo this because then you end up with a thin sound and a sound that lacks warmth, but you you know, you just have to find the right balance here of, of frequencies. So then we have the, yeah, the deep loop tape stuff for this effect. Then again, another EQ for this low and high card and also this roll off here for the bass. And we got a camel crusher to just add a bit of distortion. 
as well as compression. It's not doing a whole lot, but yeah, it's just like the mix is set to whatever, 15%. Okay, then we got this gated um, effect here for from grass speed. Just adding a bit more like rhythmic to the sound. And then also here we got the transpire to just add a bit more punch to the sound. And then, yeah, the side chain here. So then for the pianos, uh, we have the Debo tape stop at the top. <laughs> I just love this thing. Then also here, the low and high cut here again, I took out a lot of that 100, 200, 300, 400 hertz in order to get rid of that muddiness here. Then we got some OTT in order to just bring up the pianos a bit more. This one makes them sound really bright, which I was looking for here. Then I added this fruity compressor. As you can tell, the compressor makes the piano less dynamic here, which means that it stays more on like one volume. So it kind of, what we're doing with the compressor is we're bringing down the loud parts and then we're raising the whole gain. So essentially we're raising the piano again, right? So we basically have the whole piano sound more on one volume, which I wanted here. Um, again, we have to transpire for more attack. I really wanted to have that nice, in your face attack here on the whole track. Then we have some more EQing. Again here, taking down 300 Hertz a bit to get rid of that, yeah, muddiness. Then it boosts the 1.1K Hertz as well as the top end here. Then we have some delay. The ping pong delay. And then some side chain here, 98%. And um, some filter automation here. Okay, perfect, so that's it with the leads. Now let me show you how we made the drop bass line. Okay, so we have quite a bunch of layers here for the bass line. So this is the sub bass. Just some very detailed EQ in here. Then again, the deep tape stop and side chain. So that's pretty much it, what we have on the sub bass and it's from Spire. Then we have the mid basses. So here what I did again, I took out those three 400 hertz again. And then I boosted the 800 hertz. Some more EQing here, um, lowering the 400 hertz and taking out also some of that low end here. Then we have the tape stop and then we have the low and high cuts here. So I low cut them at 96 hertz since we have you know the lower frequencies already in the sub bass. And then we have the high cut at 16k hertz. A stereo enhancer to make them wider. And then some more very detailed EQ in here, just adding like a slight boost to those 770 hertz and lowering the 106 hertz by yeah, 1 dB. Then we got also the, the gate effect here, like I showed you for the, the chords already. Some side chain, this one at 92% of the filter once again for automation and some volume automation as well here. And then we have one more layer, which is a bass guitar. So here I'm also cutting away the sub frequencies below 86 Hertz, since we have those covered with the sub. I have this one dip here at 154 Hertz. I thought like this was too present with this in this bass guitar. Now the reason why I added this bass guitar here was because I wanted to have more frequencies between the sub bass and the mid basses. I thought like there was something missing. So let me show you what the bass line would sound like without the bass guitar and then I will show you what it sounds like with the bass guitar. So without it, it sounds like that.
And now with it. That bass guitar adds so much more power and energy to that bass line because it adds a bit of that rumble to it. Then we have some more yeah, drums, obviously, like this crash, some rides, some more rides. Then we got some more sounds, just check these out. So some more hi-hats here, some more claps. So all of these sounds that we added here, they all add to to the rhythm of, of the drop leads or they, they all follow the rhythm of the drop leads. So yeah, that's pretty much it actually for the drop here already. Then as you can tell, we're going back into the breakdown and it's pretty much the same here as, yeah, as the first break. There's nothing really different here. In the second half of the second verse here, we're adding an additional old school break type of beat, which sounds like this. And I'm also changing up the rhythm of the kick actually, in order to match it more with that old school break loop that we have here. So it's literally just these two things, the old school break beat and the, the rhythm that I'm changing with the kick drum that separate the second break here from the first break. So it's yeah, literally just those two things, but um, it's enough in order to keep the second break interesting. So yeah, that's pretty much it here with the verse part. Then we're going back into the chorus. And this one is not exactly the same as the first chorus, although it's obviously still very similar, but the difference is here, we have this break plug, which sounds like that individually. You don't really like notice it a lot in the full track, but if you pay attention to it, now you will definitely hear it in the, in the song. So uh, I called it dream, dreamy plug or something. And it's also a plug from Flex. And yeah, I thought it just added a really nice atmosphere, really dreamy kind of vibe to, to the chorus. And then what we're also doing uh, is we're, we're having um, the leads not in here. We don't have them in here in those eight bars, but we have them in the first chorus. So that's also a difference. And then in the build up, we're having the leads back in um, and all the other sounds like the snares, kick, right? Uplifts and stuff that I already showed you. And then that's pretty much it actually. Yeah, the second drop is pretty much exactly the same, I believe. Let me just double check here as well. Yeah, that's it with the track. Um, one more thing, let me show you how we mastered it because I also get quite a lot of yeah, questions always about the mastering, although my mastering really isn't that interesting. So first of all, we have this fruity stair enhancer and I just have this for volume automation on the master. So for instance, what I always do is I fade the song out 
so this way I'm not having any cuts at the end of the song so we're smooth uh, we're fading all the reverb of the sounds we're fading uh, that out nice and smooth and then we just have some ozone 9 so what I did here I added this slight dip around 9 k hertz on the master as well as the high cut at 16k hertz and then this one is not being used the maximizer is not being used either and then i just have the sausage fatten on the master as you can see i just open it up leave it like that and mix everything into it and then it will limit the track at minus 0.1 decibels so if you take a look here at the, the the meter of the master you will see it's not clipping everything is cut at minus 1.0 db which the sausage fatten is doing and i really like the way it limits the track i really like it so that's why i use it but yeah i hope you guys like the this walkthrough i hope you guys enjoy the, the song with wild vibes make sure to keep streaming this one links as always in the description also don't forget to pre-save my upcoming track called survive check out the first link in the description for that so yeah i hope you guys liked the tutorial make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did so subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys in the next video bye bye